So we're going to be graphing inequalities right now, and these are the notes. You've got to identify your M and your B, especially if you're dealing with a line. Plot the B, rise and run, but normally we would draw our line right here. It says, but before drawing your line, you've got to decide if your line is going to be solid or dotted according to the inequality. So if you do have something like this, that will be a solid line. If it has a solid line underneath the inequality, you are going to graph it as a solid line. If you just have something like this, you're going to do a dotted line, right? So you have to have a solid line underneath your inequality in order for it to be a solid line. So you draw your line, it might be solid, it might be dotted. After that, you gotta shade one side or the other side of that line. Um, and you wanna shade in where your answers are at. So how do you know where your answers are at? You're gonna test a point that's not on the line. Most of the time you could use zero, zero. Okay, so hopefully you guys have that jotted down. Let's go to the actual worksheet. One and two are ridiculously easy. Let's jump to number three, and we'll go back to one and two later. So number three, is it in slope-intercept form? No, so let's first get it in slope-intercept form. Let's subtract x, subtract x. We will have y is less than or equal to negative x minus four. So now it's in y equals mx plus b. Well, y inequality mx plus b. The m value is negative one, and you could say negative one over one, and the b value is negative four. So how do we graph y equals mx plus b? You start with b. Let's go to the b value, it's negative four. That's one, two, three, four down here. Let's put a dot down there. And normally from there we rise and run. So this is a negative rise. So we're gonna go down one over one, down one over one and put a dot right there. And normally I draw my line and I extend it with that same slope pattern of going down one over one, down one over one, and we could extend it with dots, it's okay. We could extend it using that slope pattern backwards. But the question is, as part two on your, or step two on your note said, do, is this gonna be a solid line or is it gonna be a dotted line? Solid, solid. why solid? It has a solid line underneath the inequality. So this is gonna be a solid line. Okay, so let's do that, solid line. Algebra one stuff, right? Now, the only other thing that you need to do is show where your answers are at. Your answers are either gonna be all down here or perhaps all up here. It all depends where your answers are at. Now, all the answers stick together. They're either on the, on the one side or the other side. So let's test a point. You could test any point you want, right? You could test any point. Look, watch, tell me when to stop. stop. Okay, let's say this, I stopped right here. This, just for funsies. If I stop right there, that's a coordinate one for x, negative one for y. So if I test this point, one, negative one, one for x, negative one for y, will it give me a true statement? What's one take away one, or one plus negative one, what's that? Zero. Is zero less than or equal to a negative number? No. So this guy is not an answer, right? It's not an answer. So I know for sure that it does not work. So where must my answers be at on the other side of the line, okay? So my answers must be down here, okay? So like, look, watch, tell me one, uh, or let's just pick any point. Let's pick, uh, let's go with this one right here, yeah? That coordinate, just for funsies, this is not what we're gonna be doing on every single problem, all right? This is the coordinate, what? One, two, three, four, five, negative five, negative one. If I were to test negative five for X and negative one for Y, it's gonna work. Right, check it out, let's go back up here. Instead of x, let me put a negative five. And instead of y, let me put a negative one, which is still negative one. And if I think about this, what's negative five plus negative one? That's negative six. And negative six is definitely less than negative four. So you see, this one does work, right? Any point down here is gonna work. No points up here are gonna work. Does that make sense? Yeah? So you're not gonna do this every time. The easiest point to test would be what? Zero, zero, as your third step on your notes say, uh, zero, zero is the easiest point to test. So if you go to zero, zero, zero there, zero there, zero for x, zero for y. If you plug in zero for x, zero for y, it's gonna say zero plus zero, which is zero, and zero is definitely not less than negative four, it's greater, zero is greater than any negative number. So zero, zero does not work, which means that your answers must be over here. So you're just gonna shade in this side over here. And that's it. Let's try another. Let's go to number five, okay, number five. 
Um, where does it cross my y-axis? What's my B value? Three. three. One, two, three, right here. What do I do from that point? Up one, Up one over two. Oh, I'm at the edge. So what? Right? Just use that pattern backwards, right? Because you do want to make your line long enough from one side of the graph to the other. So go with the pattern backwards. Instead of up one over two, go over two, down one, over two, down one. And you could extend it all the way to the other side. Okay, now the question is, is this a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted. This one's dotted because it does not have a solid line underneath it. So let's put some dotted lines right here between the dots. And finally, the last step, I need to shade in either one side of this line up here or maybe the other side of the line down here, representing the answers that actually work. So which is the easiest point to test? Zero, 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 comma, zero. So if you plug in a zero for X and a zero for Y, what will it say? It's going to say zero is less than one half times zero is zero plus three is three. So if you do plug in zero, it's gonna say zero is less than three. What do you guys think? That's true, that's true. So does this work? Yeah, it was true. So this is the answer. That means that all of my answers are down here. All of them are down here. So you're gonna shade in everything right here. What do you think? Now there is a, a slight shortcut to graphing inequalities that are lines. You see the, the less than symbol in terms of Y? Where would less than be? Would it be above that red dotted line or below that red dotted line? Below the red dotted line. So that's like a, that's like a shortcut way to instead of testing zero, zero. But testing zero, zero is a true understanding of, of knowing that your answer does work. All of your answers are down here, right? This is just saying less than is going to be below your actual uh, line. If it were greater than, it'd be above the actual line. Either way you do it is fine, OK? However, uh, we will have some like number eight, that's not a regular line. That's an actual absolute value uh, inequality. Kind of like uh, when we did in uh, the previous section. So how are we gonna graph this guy? Well, we need to think in terms of H and K, our highest or lowest point. You guys remember that? I hope so. So we have Y equals X minus H plus K. Oh, what did I forget? I forgot the A value. Let me put that in there. That's Y equals, let me put A in blue right there, since it's kind of like our slope. Anyway, so what's the, uh, the highest or lowest point? What's the, if it were a parabola, what would the vertex be? HK, right? Zero, negative one. Thank you. So let's go to zero, negative one, which is down here. Now, from this point, what do we do? Do you guys remember that? From this point, you, if it were a parabola, you would go 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. But it's not a parabola, right? This is that V. Remember that V? We use the A value like if it were the slope. And that, what's the slope here? One. Up 1 over 1. So up 1 over 1, put a dot there. Up, oh, whoops. Use a highlighter instead of the pen. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, and you do it to the other side as well. Or if you want, you could do the axis symmetry, kind of like a parabola, and reflect it to the other side as well. Is everybody with me? Okay, now, is this going to be a solid V or a dotted V? Dotted, okay, so let's put some dots between the dots. Now, I need to test a point to see where my answers are. They're either going to be on one side, on the outside of the V, or on the inside of the V. That's the question. Where are my true answers at? Are they on the outside of the V or on the inside of the V? Well, let's test the point. What's the easiest point to test? Test 0, 0, which is clearly on the inside, right? So if I test 0, 0 and it works, that means that the answers are on the inside. If I test 0, 0 and it doesn't work, that means that the answers are on the outside. Does that make sense? So let's test 0, 0. Put a 0 for y and a 0 for x. Imagine that. 0 is greater than 0 minus 1. 0 is greater than minus 1. What do you guys think of that? Is, is 0 greater than minus 1? Heck yeah. So this blue dot right here, it really is an answer. It really does work. So where am I going to shade? Inside. The inside right there. Yeah. So shade in the inside. Don't get too crazy with the shading. 
But that's it. Let's take a look at number nine. You know what? I'm not going to do number nine. You guys could do number nine. I do want to go to something that's so easy I might get confused. Look at numbers one and two. Remember, if you ever had an equation that said y equaled a number, what kind of line was that? That was a straight horizontal line crossing the y-axis at that value of negative three, which would be right here. It'd be a straight line like that. How about x equals two? What would that be? That'd be a up and down line, a vertical line crossing the x-axis at two, which would be like this. So we need to know those simple facts, especially to graph these inequalities. So let's graph y is uh, less than or equal to negative three. You go to the y-axis, you go to negative three, and you draw a horizontal line right through it. Now, when I draw my horizontal line right through the y value of negative three, am I gonna draw a dotted line right through it or a solid line right through it? Solid, okay, so let's do that solid line right through it. And of course, it's an inequality, and on inequalities, we have to shade in the area of where the answers are at. So where, where are the answers at? Are they above that red line or below that red line? Below. below. You guys use the shortcut, huh? Uh, right here it says less than. Less than would be down here. Greater than would be up here. Now, of course, you could have, and you probably should have for practice, tested the point zero, zero. And we already know it's not going to work. If you put a zero for x, which there is no x, put a zero for y, It'll say zero is less than or equal to negative three. That's false. Zero is greater than any negative number. That point does not work, which means that all the other ones must work on the other side. Okay. The other one, uh, I know that it crosses the x-axis at two. And I'm going to draw a vertical line right through it. The question is, do I make a solid line that's vertical right through it or dotted line right through it? Dotted. There's my dotted line. And do I shade in the left side of that dotted line or the right side of that dotted line? The right side, yeah? Why right? Because it says greater, okay? So right side. Um, or, or of course, you could do what we always do, test the point zero, zero. Here's zero, zero clearly on the left. And if you do plug in a zero for x and a zero for y, which there is no y, it'll say zero is greater than two. That's false. This one does not work. So that means if this one does not work, it's not an answer. None of these are answers. The answers are on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the rest of the period to do this. The answers are on the back. We're only doing one through nine. Okay, one through nine. There will be two of these on Friday's test. Two of these. We might as well do one more. I'm sorry, one more. Number seven thought the video was over but it's not okay so let's first get y by itself we're going to subtract x we're going to subtract x your new inequality will read negative 3y is less than or equal to negative x plus 6 your final step to get y by itself to get in y equals mx plus b or inequality instead of equals would be to divide by negative 3 so when you divide by negative 3 you're dividing this negative 1 by negative 3 and you're also dividing the 6 by negative 3. And since we're saying divided by negative, we should be thinking, hey, this inequality right here needs to flip, right? This inequality right here needs to flip. Sorry, we already rewrote it. So let's rewrite our final y equals mx plus b inequality. It's going to be y because that canceled. Flip the inequality. You're going to have a positive 1 third x and you're going to have a minus 2. So where does it cross the y-axis? At minus 2. From this point, how much do I rise and how much do I run? I rise one, I run three. Up one over one, two, three. Let's put a dot right there. And I continue to rise one over three. And I do want to make this a solid line or a dotted line? Solid because it is a solid line underneath my inequality. So let's make a solid line going right through this. And I either need to shade above this red line or below this red line. So just by using that shortcut trick, it's a greater than symbol. I will be shading in the greater y values, which are above, right? Or you could test 0, 0. That's the, the true understanding of it. Test 0, 0. Put a 0 there and a 0 there. It's going to say 0 is greater than or equal to, this becomes 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Absolutely, 0 is greater than any negative number. So this point right here really did work. So I will be shading in that side up here. That's it. I'm done.